Hi and welcome to my Python Advanced Train Ticketing System. Let me show you guys how this works. I can always clear or reset there. And let's select new destination. Let's assume we're going to Oxford. And is added. Let's say it's okay. Four of four added. All we just need to do now is to click on total there. You can exit if you want, which I don't intend to do. And here, this is a copy of the receipt either online or if you would like to print it out on the receipt selected class is standard and that is the cost of the ticket they are all added destination okay from departure point reference number time date and direct route so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take you to python development environment and we put one of these together let's do that now guys start a new project and right here the first thing i tend to do is to import the following python library ticking to and i'm going to import it all enter a star there which denotes import all and i'm also going to import the library as well or ttk library import ttk library and i will also import random um what else do i need i need to import tickinter tickinter message box dot message yeah just double click on message box there we go and i'm going to import date time and i will also import time itself there we go now the next thing i want to do now is to create my class and i'll call this class train and let's enter column in there now declare our function or you can call that method initialize the following and it's going to be that is going to be self comma root and self comma root right oh before i do anything let me just enter semicolon there. then self comma root i'll define my title now self dot root dot root is going to be let's just call that root as well and the next thing is going to be let's come down here self dot title there i'm gonna call the title let's say advanced train there we go there now before i do any other thing what i intend to do is let me set the german tree out of the way the german tree and i'm going to also set the background layer, the background color um set dot root dot german tree and i'm going to make that let's go for 1300 by let's say 800 plus zero plus zero which means it's going to start from right at the top left hand side here okay now let's give it a color so i'm going to, i'm just going to, i'm going to leave the background color as uh, Gainsborough, which is equivalent to something gray so let's say uh, it's going to be background equals games borough yeah you can always change your background color if you want but that's the one i intend to use okay now i'm going to create my frame 
I'll call that main frame equals frame and this very frame is going to be right inside self dot root okay comma bg so the border I'm gonna make that about 10 I'll make the width equals 1350 and height let's put a comma there height I'm gonna make that let's go for 700 comma BG color is gonna be Gainsborough okay so you copy that and just dump it there put a G there there we go and what is let's get it raised relief equals rigid there close that and right here I'm now going to round up my main main frame here dot there that's the first frame created I'm just gonna copy this use that to create the other frames and this other frame I'm gonna call that let's go for top frame one top frame one there and this will be top frame one as well there okay I'm gonna copy this and change it to let's change it first to 100 and just change that to top frame 2 and change this to that so copy and paste it right underneath here there we go this is going to be top frame 2 there we go 2 and this I'm gonna make that about 1003 and here I'm gonna make this 500 there so before I continue let me just get this thing rounded up here so in here I'm gonna use an if statement if name equals equals no now let's say equals equals and let's enter and main and that and end it with semicolon then I'm going to say the root itself equals tk and we can just say application equals train which is the class name train root okay that is taken care of and we can also ask the root dot main frame I would like it to loop there okay that's taken care of so let's save our application now and I'm just going to give it let's come in here and just save it somewhere here Let's go straight into my Python folder and just call it pi underscore advance advance train save there. Okay, guys, if I run it now, all we just see will be a plain form. There we go. There, that's just the form. So I'm going to close that. I'm gonna copy this and just create some other frames in there. So let's add that one. This very frame I'm gonna call it. Uh, let's just say F1. That'll be frame one F1. F1 is going to be inside frame number two. Copy that. Paste that in here. Frame top uh, top frame two. And uh, let's change it height or the width to 
890 and the height I'm going to leave the height as about about 500 okay now let's change this to border I'm going to make that about 5 and I'll just leave it like that so here that will be F1 and F1 in this case is going to be inside row equals 0 comma and the column column as well is going to be 0 so I can copy F1 we stand for frame 1 and paste it in there changes to F2 and all I just need to change inside the F2 is going to be row equals 1 column equals 1 okay I'm now going to let's get this one padded to the to the x axis area there so what I'm going to do now is let me run it and see how that's going to look like I'll take it from there okay that's not too bad alright so what I'll just do is let's speed up the whole development of the frames then I'll get back to you guys shortly and right there I have all the all the codes for the frames all sorted okay have a good look at it let's take it from the top here from the main frame up to the buttons frame here I'm going to be using this one for the buttons there we go there bring it down okay let's try it so you guys see how that looks like this is how it's looking now there isn't much to it so what I now need to do is let me come in here and just enter the title okay right underneath here I just enter a comment line there then I'll enter my title there there we go that be that would be the title for my project I'm just going to block that as well underneath here there we go there um if we run it this is how it's going to look like for now there okay okay let's continue and right underneath the title I'm going to declare the following variables that I intend to use I'll call the very first one date one equals string parentheses and time one equals string as well parentheses and so alright those are my variables what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come down here and instead of assigning values to these variables that I've declared I'm just going to clear it out for now so let's come right in here copy those and just come right here and set the value that set equals nothing and the same thing applies to the second one as well in fact, all of the variables that I've declared there. Come on, paste that in there. So those are all my variables. I've assigned zero value to all of them. Now the next thing I like to do is okay, let's enter a line here. And this is going to be just for the widget actually. So that'll be label widget. Let's say label. So the very first one I'm going to use that for my for the title of my receipts so copy that and paste that down here and let's just modify that change the name to receipt and the same thing for the one below right so 
the following changes I'm going to carry out. First of all, I'm going to change this to maybe about 18. And what about here? Let's just change that to ticket training. Okay, no traveling. Traveling. So that will be traveling ticketing system. Yeah, something like that. And the border width is about make that 28 because it's not that large and then, then uh, I also need to change this I'm going to have to change that to frame top right the frame should be frame top right copy that and come right down here let's change where that widget is going to be resident to frame top right now let's run the program and see how that's going to look like there we go so one down let's take care of the rest so I'm just going to copy this and paste and just change things around for the others okay now I'm going to add some space you know just underneath here so what I intend to do is because of the design you have to put also put the design into consideration you might be wondering why do I want to do that but I'm gonna to have to do it anyway that is how I'm gonna do that I'll just add a bit of space a bit of room in here let's just type in space in here with a text box actually and that very text box would not have anything so um, that label I mean we have nothing so you come down in here so this very label I will leave that I will then delete I'm gonna get rid of this get rid of that yeah I will get rid of this as well so let's just say that's going to be BG equals light gray there we go and what else do I want to take care of the width I'm gonna make the width about let's go for 36 yeah that should be wide enough and the height I'm gonna make that about two okay what about the yeah, it's in the same frame and this time around the column in his own case is going to be column 6 and this will be 0 0 yeah let me run it and see how that's going to look like alright that's it right there I think I like it okay close that now there's something I need to do let's change the name of this to SP and another SP here there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of like speed it up and get back to you guys with all of the label widgets you guys know how to develop with, uh, labels anyway okay I have finished with this now let me just show you guys the widgets let's take it from here you've seen that before I'm gonna bring it down that's where I've added my space now to change the color of that very space take it down all the way to the second space bar that I created there all right if I run it this is how it's gonna look like for now there we go it's not looking that great yet but we're still working on it and just for your information someone would like to know why don't I kind of like indent it properly something like this okay for your lecturer or for your professors or your teachers make sure you get it right in my own case because it's going to take too much of lines of code mirror having to run down up and down that is why I actually leave mine like this okay I'm not under 
any professor or lecturer or teacher's examination but make sure you guys do it the right way the way they want for your project as for me I just intend to do it this way just for my video to give me enough room to work okay then so let's create some more widget to cover the rest of the the rest of the application right here and I also need to add a button add buttons here okay close that okay the next thing I like to do now is I'm gonna add let's add button to it and let's see how the how the right frame is gonna look like okay for now this is how it's looking but I'm gonna add I'm gonna add four buttons underneath here just to push this up a little bit okay let's do that so right underneath here the first button is going to be let's just say BTN total so BTN total equals widget button and widget button is going to be resident right inside this maybe I need a font as well I might as well just maybe copy those copy all of this and paste it right in here okay the text on this is going to be let's just call it total there we go and what else do I want let's set the width it's going to be about 8 height I'm going to make the height let's set to 4 1 I can always increase the height if I want to right so let's get it parted X axis padding I'm going to make that too and Y axis padding I'm going to make that maybe okay let's go for 16 to push it up a little bit there and add the border make the border around too there we go I'm going to close that up and let's come down here copy this and just get it rounded there we go and there that is going to be I'm going to make that grill copy that paste that in here undo that again come in here again copy control C and paste it here in this case this is going to be that will be around 10 yeah 10 10 by 0 that will be the very first one make this 0 so I'm going to run it let's see how that's going to look like then we can just copy and paste it around yeah that's my very first button there close that let's just copy it and need three more copy and paste it right down here okay get it indented and this is going to be one column one column two and column three yeah so let's run it and see how that's going to look like there that's how it's looking so I'm going to now change the data on it so this one is going to be exit and this the next one I'm going to call that reset I'm just going to call this clear or I can even add just three that's all right and change the names this one is clear and clear and the next one is going to be reset copy reset and reset why right here we have exit exit and exit 
So let's run it and see how that's gonna look like now. There we go, guys. So I'm almost almost done with. In fact, I'm done with this part of it now. All I just need is to, need to do is to get the functions in place. Okay, let's come right here. Before I add any other widget, let me go up here and just declare some other variables that I intend to use. Now, let's come right underneath here. I'm going to call that variable one. That's an integer. I need about 12 of those, so I'm just going to copy this and paste it and change the numbers. Okay, that's six there. Copy again and just paste it and just change the numbers around. That will be two, three, and so on. Okay, I've completed my variables, so have a good look at them from six up to nine. Those are just strings. And here I have the tag subtotal and total. And as you can see, the this variable have assigned zero value to each of them. Okay, that's taking care of the variables. Yeah. Now what I want to do is I now want to create some checkbox. But first thing first here, because if I run this program now. I just want to try out something to make sure this these two works okay for the date and time so I'm gonna get rid of that come right down here maybe right below this one there so I'm gonna create something for my date so let's call that date one dot set and that will be time dot string time that should hopefully take care of my very first time anyway that should be f f t okay. and let's get it for the time formatted that is D for day and M for the month then I also need a year okay I'm gonna make that all capital letter and just close that that is for the date now let's do one for the time copy that come right down here and paste that and here it's gonna be time Let's get it indented. As for time, I'm just going to change this to H, in uppercase. This will be M, in uppercase as well. And this is S, in seconds. So, so that you guys won't confuse, I'm just going to put a comment there. That is for time, and this one is for it there well let's close this bracket here so we have an error okay as you can see in the very first code I actually call the time inside my variable and I've also called the date if you guys can still recall the very first widget so I'm going to run it and let's see how that's going to look like there we go, we have our time and we have the date. Okay, that's cool. Right. Oh, I noticed something on the time. Let's see. Look at those lines. Okay, let's get them changed. Close that and come right down here. And in here, I'm just going to enter semicolon and another semicolon here. There. That should fix that. Now, right underneath here, I'm going to just enter that in here and maybe one more here. Okay, here. I will now 
let's say LBL LBL class that is equals label and this very label will be right inside top left frame one and inside top left frame one I'm going to have the following let me copy this paste it right here and this one is going to be known as class and let's change this to about maybe 20 22 okay now what else do we need to do we don't have a border make that about 8 close that and I'm just going to run this up class come in here or you can just say yeah we, we can just say grid we have enough room anyway and let's make that grid um, row equals zero comma column equals zero as well and this is strictly waste and close that let me give that a shot and see how that's going to look like we have an error Okay, that's not working. So I'm going to copy all of this, cut that off, and come right down here and just say LDL class. There we go. That should be, that should do the trick. Oh, it should work. I think is the, the spelling that is wrong. So let's come in here, get rid of this. Yeah. Is the spelling that is wrong so let's see yeah it's working okay I'm gonna copy this I just cut it and paste it here and get rid of this and see how that's going to respond yeah that's fine okay there's nothing wrong with my method of coding the only problem was the spelling the wrong spelling of the column so one column down now the next thing i want to do right under this very one is i'm going to now create a checkbox so let's call that chk and the very first checkbox i'm going to call that standard standard checkbox equals widget button and this widget button is going to be inside top left frame one that's one of my frames and I also need as follows let's grab this dump it right here and what else do I need the text the text value I need I'm going to make that I've just called that standard is that in there copy this and just replace this with that that would be standard and what about the options oh first and first let me let me enter my variable let's say variable equals variable one okay variable one is right here there we go I've just assigned that variable to this checkbox now so and the state is going to be value equals between I set value equals one for the on and for the off value that will be equals zero close that okay so we want this there's not enough room for all of that so let's do this here or I, maybe I, if I copy this that should work as well paste it there but this it seems to be too long I don't know if you guys will like it now let's change this rule the rule will be one and the column in this case will be zero okay 
So let's run it and see how that's going to look like. We have an error, so I need to close. Okay. How many do I have? I have one here. I'll get rid of that. Whoop, oh, undo that. It's meant to get rid of this. I'll try it again. Just excess bracket. There, yeah, look at that. That is fine. I like that. I'm going to copy this and use it for the others. Paste, paste. So the next one is going to be economy. Right. Let's change that to economy. Thing. Yeah, I believe the spelling is right. So let's copy that and paste that in here. There. And this will be roll two this will be roll number three and this we change this to first class yeah and the name let's change the name to first class now the variables let's change the variables this one is one the first one this one will be two and three if you guys cannot see it let's put some space in between so that you can see it properly now let's run it and see how that's going to look like there right there guys looking good now let's do the same thing here okay for the next frame here this empty frame let me show you this very one okay let's take care of this first i'm gonna come in here and just i'll copy this i will copy those come right down here paste now the first change i would like to do is i'm going to change this to l lbl select now lbl select is going to be the role is going to be zero zero the column zero and here would be known as select select destination destination right now i only need two of these though yeah I will need just two. Let's change one of these to others. And the text I need to be added. Change that to added. Yeah, that's nice. And this one, I'm going to change the value of this to four. This one will be five, right? And this one will be child. There, change the name to child as well. Okay. And I will like to put the this one inside top frame three. Three. Yeah because my top frame 3 is centered let's see oh first and first let's add a drop down list so inside the drop down list I'm going to need the name of my destinations okay let's do this I will select this that is supposed to be like the title paste another one right underneath here and I'll change the name of these two destination there this this is going to be zero one two that will be two and this will be three and right beside this destination i need to have a combo box 
combo and a very combo I'm just gonna call it destination combo destination the combo destination is going to be the widget is going to be equals that will be ttk dot combo box so that's the widget in Python that is what is called combo box ttk inside the library ttk now and it's also going to be right inside or oh, this one should be three and this should be three as well frame three grab this and paste this in here comma okay the variable for that well, let's say text variable copy that paste the text variable here it has to be text variable I'm gonna make that maybe nine because the others are this is string yeah. so nine and let's copy the font let's add a font to it and the font I'm gonna make that maybe maybe 20 or or maybe leave it as 22 for now so the font is there there should be a comma here yeah there's a comma that's fine and the state of this combo box because I don't want anyone to be able to edit the combo box I'm going to make the state read only there so which means you cannot edit the content inside it and what else what about the width the weight is going to be about eight good now for this combo box the text content we want inter inside it and or you can call it the value copy that paste this underneath here the value is going to be as follows let's enter them as an array so value the first value I'm gonna go for equals yeah I'm just gonna call that the first value will be empty comma the next value is going to be killbone yeah we're traveling to killbone why not yeah that's my first value the second value Let's go to Preston. Preston. There. Okay, and the third value. Yeah, let's head for Oxford University. Yeah, we say Oxford for that. And the next one. Let's go to Leeds. I've got some friends there. And finally, I'm going to enter Brixton, where I have my homies. I have them in Brixton. So. Okay. So, what else do we want to do now? We don't need to just come in here and just say current value now dot current we will make that zero and it's going to be right here that's a grid copy all of that paste that in here the grid is going to be row one column one I don't think this strictly right need to be there and that's it so let's save and run first and see how that's gonna look like there guys look at that check that out yeah I like that yeah Oxford Leeds yeah go we'll see homies oh we need to change this let's change that and we can just change that to 
let's say destination the text I need to be just destination now we can even call it option travel option or whatever there we go now let's take care of this one this very one here okay in here we need our ticket type which that would be single double or whatever so come down here first thing I'm just gonna copy that copy all of this come right down here let's move this up paste it here I'm gonna copy this so that you guys don't get it mixed up and let's indent both of this control tab tab there and this is going to be ticket type here yeah. ticket ticket type right and the text content will be ticket type as well copy that paste that in here And it's going to be inside top left frame two. Yeah, that's frame two because of the arrangement that I made. And it's going to be zero zero. So let's run that and see how that's going to look like. There we go. It's right inside frame two. Now, I may have a problem with this because of the fonts, but let's see. I may have to change it around. Okay, instead of 22, I'm just going to make all, all this font 20. There's no way I've used 22, so. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to copy all of this. Copy that, because there won't be enough room. Control H. Paste that in there. And paste this in here and just change it all to 20 replace it all there so that should take care of those right now underneath here let's run it and see how if there's enough room for, for my okay yeah that's looking good now okay close that now right here I need two checkbox one is going to be uh, single and the other one is going to be return paste that now this one is in row and that's row zero this one is going to be row one yeah and i need a text box beside it this will be row two yeah right change this one to now it becomes single and this is known as return there we go and the text the text content on it this one will be return and this will be single copy that paste that in here okay let's write there we go oh we need to delete that that is fine I'll come right in here where did we get that okay I think the problem is I was supposed to change this to frame 2 and this is frame 2 as well you have to be careful so let's come in here and see again how that looks like good that's fine now we now need I think we're going to need text entry or entry entry widget so underneath here I'm going to need text or not label first come down here paste that and this is two and this label I'm going to change that to comment right let's change this to comment as well now this is two this will be three and beside it there is going to be 
the test entry so I'm going to change that to entry the entry is going to be rule 3 column 1 1 and here I'm going to change this to comment so that I know that now let's change the entry to e maybe etn et and comment right that should work let's run it and see okay but that's too large let's, re let's reduce that so my text entry first of all this shouldn't be there that should be a text variable to assign some value there for me so changes to variable and get rid of all of this so that is going to be I think one of the yeah that's number seven let's use seven and I will reduce the width here I'm gonna make it about eight come right down here paste eight in there that's for the text entry that would be beside the label so let's see how that's going to work all right okay then you see this other one this strictly okay let's just leave it as strictly west now the other two this very one i need label to display when i click on them or maybe a text entry as well yeah text entry okay copy this text entry copy that paste it right underneath there and let's change that to single test entry single and inside text entry single is going to take in variable let's make that variable for this single I'm gonna make it 12 yeah 12 right and this is rule 1 this one will be rule 1 column 1 okay let's run that there we go rule 1 column 1 we will use some functions to get rid of this so I'm going to just going to copy this and paste it here for the next one copy this come right down here this will be for test entry return copy return change the name test entry return and here are the variable for this we can say return variable yeah okay I can use six I have a new six right and this one will be this is two and zero okay two here and one here okay that should that should do it now let's run it there we go guys that's looking good so let's take care of these two it's gonna be a calculator here I already have I already have some calculators on board you can just have a look at that I will include the the the, the URL of the calculator right here but these other ones are just going to be tab subtotal and so on so let's take care of those now okay I'm going to copy this and paste it right underneath here and this will be for my calculator this is for my calculation of the various okay let's copy this one I'm going to copy that paste it right here that will be for tax Okay, and the frame for tax will be bottom 
bottom bottom left frame one yeah bottom left frame one is right here bottom left frame one okay that's uppercase let's hope i have uppercase there yeah i do all right that's fine now in that case that is going to be for my tags and as for the tags that will be on rule zero let's see okay we need to change this to tax so maybe we should just enter tax in there or maybe state tax okay right beside it we're gonna need widget I'm gonna copy that entry widget right here paste this entry widget will okay it's going to be inside bottom left as well and here the variable for that is going to let's change that variable to okay that's tax actually that's easy to remember it's tax and let's change this to zero that will be zero and this will be one okay I'm gonna run it let's see how that's going to look like there we go okay so I'll just copy it run for the others so copy subtotal and total and just change this to subtotal and this one is subtotal as well okay if this is zero this will be one one and one right here okay that's subtotal taken care of this should be tax and here we have total get rid of the sub the same thing here there and here we change this to total okay this is one and this will be two two and a two here right let's run it and see how that's going to look like there but this frame seems to be drifting towards the left so I'm going to increase the size of this so let's come back in here and the text or oh, shall we increase the width then I'll make this 28 yeah let's go for about 20 something 28 and yeah let's go for 28 28 28 save and run there we go so we just need our calculator here and then we can call it the end of this very part first part second part okay before i take care of the calculator let me change this to about five five and five that makes it look a bit presentable okay it's looking much better now for the calculator I'm going to have to speed that up you guys know where the codes for those are so I'm going to close this close this as well and just type in calculator here and we'll speed that up okay I have the lines of code for the calculator take it from here from here all the way down here there we go those are the lines of code for the calculator so I'm going to take it back up here so that you guys can see it there first rule in the first rule I have the display and four buttons on the second rule display 
this is actually first row second row third row fourth and fifth there I'm now going to run it now this is how it all looks like we're going to do a bit of tidying up but uh, let me just take care of the functions first then we, we can tidy it up then first thing first if you guys notice this frame here it's kind of like stretch and that's because of this select destination text so let's come in I'm going to get it spanned so let's come right here I'm going to say comma column so column is going to span to copy that put that in there column span equals two and this border I'm going to make that two as well okay let's run it again and see how that's going to look like there you see that's much better okay let's start work with our functions or methods then we can take care of more of this uh, just uh, tidying up the whole system but first thing first let's take care of the functions okay let's go here you see right here I'm going to create all my functions here so click copy that and let's paste, paste it right underneath here okay that's where I have all my variables all right yeah okay I'm just gonna enter function in here functions or function declaration all right okay then now the very first one I would like to take care of, let's say, defined as follows. I'm just going to call it I exit there. And as for the exit, I'm going to say I exit equals message box, but that would be TK in a dot message box. Just type in an E and that should pop up. And on that very message box, we say let it use the following, or let's just say dot, and that should appear. That's supposed to be ax. Okay, that's the following icon I intend to use ax yes or no. And in there, I'm just gonna enter my very first argument, second one. The first argument is going to be called. Uh, let's just say travel no train train ticketing system that's my first argument that will be the title on the message box the second argument is confirm if you want to quit yeah that's fine okay let's use an if statement to validate the selection made if I exit is less than zero then we can just exit so let's say root dot de destroy this is there return there so that's the first one taken care of I'm gonna copy this and let's go straight into our button right underneath here let's look for exit that's exit so come right here comma to call that very function you enter command equals whatever the name of your exit button is now instead of me coming back here I'm just gonna copy this and change things around here this is for reset paste that and I'll change this to reset 
just to speed up things I'm going to be using the other one for reset as well there so for the resets I'm going to do as follows okay let's come up here now I'm going to copy all of this okay those are my variable that we initialized to zero so we'll come right down here and just say call that reset there and just paste those that I've just copied okay and we get it indented else we we'll end up with an error Okay, that should take care of my reset but it's not finished yet I still have some other that I will have to reset I'm going to have to reset this as up to 12 then I have to reset this as well copy that come right down here paste that in there and just get it cleared so I'm going to copy this and clear those clear clear and clear I also need to clear the other all of these other ones here might as well just copy them all come right down here and just paste it okay yeah okay that's for function reset okay so let's come down so that you guys see the code for function oh this is reset i paste it in the wrong place um from here copy all of those cut it and paste it right underneath it there we go now and then yeah that's for my function reset okay now I'm going to run it let's try out exit and function reset now reset or clear okay because I asked that to add zero I should actually clear that I don't want destination that should be zero. Let's see this ones. Did I take care of them? Clear, that's good. What about okay? What about this ones? Let me run it again and be sure what I have in there. No. Can't see that. Try it again. okay I have zero values in there okay that's fine alright my reset is working but this is not doing anything yet so I need some some lines of code to take care of that no a function actually button click because on the buttons it's called button click so I need to write a function for that so right inside the buttons for the calculator right here see I'm actually using lambda to call each button so I'm going to copy that button click now let's take it up where the functions are now we're going to write another function for that press enter come in here function button click there and for function button click the first thing is uh, let's say global operator and this operator equals operator equals operator plus string numbers there we go then we can say input which is on the entry widget 
text underscore input dot set and what we set in here that will be operator this should hopefully take care of the button click so anytime I click on them it should display the numbers but for it to display number inside this argument I have to add numbers so let's run it and see that and try out the calculator you will see all of these on uh, on YouTube really okay I don't think this will work yet okay the calculator we're almost there so let's take care of another calculator function so there's a function btn clear display so that's going to be for the display button and clear display is we just want it to clear as follows so I'm gonna copy all of this I'm right down here paste Okay, now let's take care of the following. We just want this to get cleared. Um, what about this? Let's change this to clear as well. So clear display is taken care of. I can then copy this and just paste it inside the command. So let's just say command equals clear. So go right down to where we have the clear button. Of the calculator right here okay I'm going to say comma command equals btn clear so that should take care of that I'm going to save and run and let's make sure the clear button works we can enter data in there clear that's good okay now finally let's take care of the equals okay with the equals I can just say comma command equals btn equals input btn equals input so I'm gonna copy that that's gonna be the name of my function okay I've not I haven't written the function yet so come here underneath here function let's get it indented right okay so let's copy this paste it right in here and just change things around okay the first the first thing I will do in this I'm gonna create a local variable I'll call it sum up sum up equals whatever is assigned to the operator we view that as a string value we want to get it ev evaluated and let's copy the operator so whatever is inside the operator evaluate it convert it to a string value and then the input this time around will be sum up so that will be this there however we need to get rid of this one get rid of these we don't need that or we can just come in here and say okay play that so which means this should be here there we go get it indented so that should take care of the equals so we can even try that out now so we have for each button to clear the button and to add up whatever value using the following evaluation function and the lambda function the lambda function as well okay, let's see all right let's get that corrected first yeah that's the error there I open a bracket open another bracket here and the second bracket to close it is missing that's why okay let's save and run again okay 8 multiplied by whatever there we go 
multiply by 2 there. Okay, that's fine. Now, now I need to create another function. The other function is going to be for travel cost. Okay, so let's go down here and just say function travel cost. There. Now, we we'll use the if statement if variable nine dot get equals equals kilburn that is the or oh, this is the variable that is storing the names of my destination and uh, look at the names let's come down here I think they are all here somewhere there we go I'm dealing with kilburn now this very one okay back in there so I want to check where the destination might be there and whatever value we have in one let's say get whatever we have in one if is equals equals to one and and four if four is equals to one as well okay paste that in there variable number four if that is equals to one as well then we want the following let's create a local variable here I'm gonna call that cost equals let's float and that will be 30 point let's make that up 30 pounds ATP now let's go for single as a single equals float and let's get whatever we have inside variable number 12 12 dot get there what about the cost for adult local variable adult in the case of adult we have to tax them let's say equals let's enter pound sign here and now let's work out the tax so that's going to be comma string and we enter as follows yeah and uh, that'll be into two decimal place okay and let's enter percent total cost so multiply that by single close that and multiply by let's make that about zero point seven or 0 0.7 yeah or 9 yeah that's fine so that will be for the adult tax okay that's the adult tax but we can still let's say adult tax we now need how much which should be the sub uh, which should be the subtotal adult that's what adult we pay that would be for the subtotal this is for the tax and this let's change this one to fees okay and then we we'll say total cost we'll say total cost equals pound sign and that will be all of this let's indent this first I'm going to get all of these here. 
this so you can't uh, paste that in there okay and now then I'll copy all of this again this very one here I need to add it together to give me the tax I could have created a variable but because I have this pound sign this one doing it this way around yeah so that should work out the tax for me or that should work out the total the tax plus the total okay we now need to assign the following into the text box uh, into the tax so let's say dots what do we need to enter into tax we need to enter other tax paste that in there okay that is for the tax we also need the subtotal as for the subtotal that's going to be this so copy that subtotal sub total dot set there we go that's what subtotal now we want the class of ticket to be displayed and so on and we also want the total cost so maybe let's set the total cost first So that would be total. Dot set equals total cost. There we go. Yeah. Now I want the following though. I want the tickets class to be displayed. So if it's standard, we we'll say ticket. get class dot set standard because this calculation is for the standard fare and then we want tickets ticket price ticket price that will be the adult fee Added fee LB. Yeah, that should be dot set. Okay, so I'm going to speed this up and show you guys the final output. Well, and then I'll undo that. Select it again and just de indent it. Okay okay guys those are the, the rest of the code all I just did is uh, for the children tax is no added if the checkbox of children is selected that would be in this case that's no because it's for adult and the checkbox of adult is here is destination uh, from Oh, that should be from destination okay because this is the variable and this one this is the destination too right. and this one that's just the price okay that goes in there and the root this direct root and here this is just for my reference okay I made this up and that's the reference number that will follow I will now copy this and go straight into the button this very button here total and I'll just enter command comma command equals travel cost okay I will now use else if let's copy all of this copy that for the others and come right down here if if that is 
kill bone and in this case the price let's say the price has changed to about 23.8 and this has changed as well as the selection made and what else do we want to change I think that would be all okay I want to move this total let's move this one cut that off and let's put that right underneath here okay. I'll repeat the same thing for this one rid of that yeah so let's speed that up for the orders now so and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I finish all I'm just doing is copying and pasting it copy come right down here paste and change things around okay I've completed the function declaration for the total cost so let me take it down we just have one more thing to do here are the function declaration it's all the same apart from the different price rate which you can see here and the different names of where we're traveling to let's take it down so that you can see it and the different options as for leads that's leads again different option or different selection for the end user there and skill button again and you just change it around that's all you need to do and that's all there is to the function definition for the travel cost and that is it it's, it's very long that's why I have to speed it up to speed this up okay so that's the function definition which you guys can change around so the next thing I like to take care of now before we can call it the end of this very long project if not the longest that I've ever tackled that will be I'm gonna call that C H K that will be let's put an S in the single button underscore value so in this case that is going to be for my checkbox so what I would then say is if variable 10 dot get equals equals 1 then in that case variable 12 dot set declare whatever we have in there there okay now this should be indented let's come down so that you guys can see the rest now the next condition is going to be the entering single we want that to get the focus get focus And after that, entering single, dot configure, we want it to be normal because when you start the program, the state is going to be disabled. So let's say normal. There we go. Then variable 11. Dot set we want to set the value of that to zero because we don't want anyone to have anything to do with the second variable which is the return so I'm gonna copy that just put that in there so the return the state of the return in this case is going to be disabled Come in here, get that disabled. Disabled. And we then set the value in there. 
variable six dot set and that will be zero okay else if else if variable ten dot get equal equals zero if it's zero I want the single to get disabled disable single and this will be single and variable twelve is that in here where the 12 will be equals zero it should be a value in it okay so I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the other one so I'm gonna copy this and just change the name around the name this time will be R the function name is checkbox R so that is for return and this is for single ticket in the case of that this will be variable 11 and that will be 6 and we want it to set focus to return just the opposite of what I've done or the same thing of what I've done I'm doing that for the return same thing of what I've done to the single one do that that should be return okay so I'm going to speed this up and get back to you guys okay guys those are the that's the function and I'll need to call this function inside the checkbox okay so if I run it nothing will happen right now because I need to call them okay so I can select this select that there or if I check this I expect that to get rid of the zero and enable that but that's not happening okay and that's the whole purpose of these functions so I'm gonna copy this let's go straight down and change things around come right down this one is RC um, check CHK R and this the other one is CHKS so let's go right down to where I have ticket right here so I'm going to say comma command command equals that I'm going to copy this for the other one and change it around to R so come right here and that's going to be that so change this to letter R and let's give that a try Okay, decision time. Okay, we want a standard ticket and destination. Let's say we're going to press in and it's an R dot single and let's enter number of passenger seven and there. So let's click on total. There we go. That's fine guys. It's working as we want. That's beautiful. So guys with that i'm going to call it the end of this long tutorial and i suppose you guys enjoy it you all have a nice day now and bye for now